Um, we do have uh, Zakaya on. Uh, he he's our head of media and news, and like Max said, he's coming out with the article in a bit. Uh, how are you doing, Zakaya? I'm doing pretty good today. How about you guys? Good. We're doing well. We're doing well. So, do you mind telling us a little bit about uh, the article that you are coming out with in a in a few days? So, first, I'm going to talk about the changing in the world stage. As you mentioned, Pulisic has really opened the way for young American players to gain more respect in European football. We can see that today with Gio Reyna making progress at Dortmund, Sergio Des at Barcelona, and my main topic today, Weston McKinney. Miss McKenney at Schalk, uh, who's playing, well, he's on loan from Schalk playing for Juventus. And he's really had an amazing season so far. Uh, two goals, two assists, and he scored a world class goal against Barcelona in the Champions League. But mainly, it's just a change in American soccer um, from primarily the U.S. men's national team coming from the MLS to having talent worldwide um, from many of the European clubs. Yeah, I think that the improvement in U.S. players uh, throughout the past few years has been exponential, to say the least. The, the U.S. has had players popping up, Conrad De La Fuente, uh, Serginho Dest, like you said, Weston McKinney doing well. Um, we all knew about Pulisic far before the past couple years. He, he was a good young talent, and now he's proving it at Chelsea. He proved it at Dortmund. I think that we're seeing a ton of players, and before this, we had guys like John Brooks, like we talked about a little bit ago with um, the whole Ike Opara discussion, but we, we had guys like John Brooks and, and Clint Dempsey a while back, Landon Donovan, who were good. Mm-hmm. They, they were very good, don't get me wrong, but I think we're seeing a lot more young talent that could be popping up. Another one that I was uh, researching and seeing is Sebastian Soto, who, who looks really, really good. Um, but yeah, I think I think the overall shift, like you were saying, Zakai, is, is really positive right now. Yeah, I think that following the 20, 2018 World Cup where the U.S. failed to qualify, a lot of the young soccer players uh, thought of making that next step so that they could help you know, even the country just qualify for the 2022 World Cup. And we're seeing how it's working today. Yeah. Um, I, I do agree with you. You have anything to say about that? Yeah, I just find it odd because, you know, this has kind of come out of nowhere. Um, after losing to Trinidad and Tobago in, um, qualification for the World Cup, you know, we didn't make it. And then, uh, Berhalter came in, kind of changed the whole squad to a younger team. And then you're seeing all these really good young players who are now linked to, you know, Barcelona, Juventus, all these huge teams kind of out of nowhere. I wonder why, you know, they weren't kind of thought of as really good as at the U17, U16 yeah. kind of time, you know, with those, because they have the national team for those age groups. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if they did well or they weren't doing well and they just kind of developed really well until now. And now they're getting their break. But, you know, you see uh, young players in England and stuff, like 16 years old they're like oh this guy is going to be the next big player yeah and then you don't see that for the u.s and now they're only a couple years older and the u.s is thought of as like the next big team exactly and i think an interesting uh person to look at to totally describe the situation is a minnesota boy caden clark he has come absolutely out of nowhere he was a really good player and everyone in the soccer community who was who was running the national team and everything, they all knew about him. But the general public wasn't talking about Caden Clark very much. And now there there is a ton of stuff about him out. Um, and he, he's been doing really well in the MLS, scoring three goals, I think. And he only came in towards the latter half of the season. He yeah, only played like five or six. Exactly. Games. So um, someone who's doing that well, I think, really describes the entire U.S. national team scene right now really, really well. Um, and and yeah, we see uh, Zakai. You were uh, you were talking about, or, or at least I know you were going to talk about in your article how Weston McKinney won U.S. Uh, Player of the Year. Yeah. Yeah. So recently, in the past couple of weeks, they announced that Gio Reyna won the best young American player, and Weston McKinney won the U.S. Male Player of the Year. And at only age twenty-two, that's an incredible feat for any player. Yeah. So, I- 
Totally, I totally agree with that. Um, it really shows his potential. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Uh, and um, and I think that it's it's interesting because we know that Pulisic was very good for us, but we we do know he he had injury problems and he wasn't really pulling the strings as as Chelsea needed him to. Although in the last game against Arsenal, he looked very good. Although they lost three uh, one, he had a dribble that went through about four people. And then played it off to Reese James, who crossed it in, and Tammy Abraham chested it into the back of the net. There was a little bit of a VAR discrepancy, but it was called as a goal in the end. And he had a couple other dribbles that were looking really good. Um, our last thing that I was going to ask you, uh, do you, where do you think the U.S. will land come 2026 uh, and, and maybe even the 2022 World Cup? Well, obviously, um, the main goal right now is just making the World Cup. Yeah. I think in, by 2026, if we can continue producing this quality level of talent and hopefully the MLS continues to produce more American talent for the national team, that we could possibly make it round of 16 quarterfinals. Yeah, I totally agree. That is a likely, likely option. Yeah, I, I wouldn't quite go to say that we're like the, the Belgian um, golden age, golden age <laughs> or whatever they call it. But but we are looking promising, and and it's not yet like you said, Zakaya. But it is it, it could be coming in the future, and that's really good to see for all of our American listeners, which is like ninety five percent of everyone who listens. Yes. <laughs> so so it, it's it's really good to see that we have these uh, young Americans that could be popping up, and like like we said earlier, there's so many that are popping up right now that we didn't know about. Imagine five years from now, we could have twenty more players playing for. Teams like Barca, Man City, Liverpool, Juventus, stuff like that. So I think it's super, super promising. Um, thank you so much for coming on, Zakaya. Uh, we all look forward to reading your article, which should be coming out today or tomorrow. Uh, am I correct for uh, with that? Yeah, coming out tomorrow. Perfect. And yeah, so the pod will be coming out tomorrow. So you guys can check that out while you're listening or after you're listening. And uh, And thank you so much. And we'll have you on sometime soon. All right. Yeah, no problem. See you, Zeke.